have Alex Bachman, the owner and founder of Snappy. Um, so Snappy is a, well, well, Alex Bachman himself is a frequent speaker and published author from Prentice Hall. You are an accomplished entrepreneur. He said he built four companies, um, a serial entrepreneur. Correct. Um, right, and right, right. Like serial killer. <laughs> but not that. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and uh, his Fortune 500 experience includes IBM and UNUM. Uh, so please welcome Thank you. our friend from Snappy. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So these are a 10 minute drill. So I'll try to basically uh, share some information with you about best practices in construction apps. Tell you a little bit about what Snappy is all about. And. Uh, and. It's up. Okay, we're on. All right, fantastic. So Snappy, what we're doing is we are absolutely disrupting the way apps are being built. When you think mobile apps, you think what? Mobile app developer, six months, $50,000. Okay, Snappy is a cloud platform. You log in, you visually drag and drop, start building an app. In a couple of hours, you can build a pretty functional, very feature-rich, native Android and iOS app. Not writing a line of code. Okay? So what programmers do in months, in Snappy you do in days. And anybody can do it. Any one of you can do it. <laughs> okay? So why construction? So we, um, we use our own platform. We have people building apps on our platform, and we build apps. We have probably uh, more business apps in Google and Apple App Store than any, any company out there. We have about 80 apps uh, in 26 different industries. And construction is one of the really humming industries for us, right? I mean, we have lots of construction apps. Our construction manager, for example, had about a half a million downloads and very, very active use, okay? So what we learn from the App Store, and what we learn from the users using the apps, we turn around right away into more apps or app improvements, right? And so we're kind of like viral, kind of like uh, amoeba type of thing. But uh, so let's talk about what we learn in best practices in construction industry. Okay, so inspection, safety, and data collection huge scheduling meetings. In general, field, which has been really technology behind, is really coming around with this mobile stuff. And plus, we're seeing that huge number of medium-sized and small companies are starting to use mobile apps. You don't have to spend $100,000 on a piece of software anymore. Right? A lot of people downloading our apps, yeah, there's some, of the, some of them are huge construction companies, but a lot of them are, you know, I like to call two, two guys and a dog, right? S small contractors that, you know, gee, I downloaded construction daily log. Oh, very cool. I can start using it. All right? I pay my five bucks a month and I'm happy. All right? So mobile is really democratizing the whole construction industry. I mean, it's really turning it upside down. And there's a huge revolution going on out there in the field. Scheduling, meetings, keeping status of projects, right? assigning tasks. I mean, all these things now are absolutely possible. So big areas for us, you know, inspections, quality, safety, compliance, right? Take all your forms. We have a thing called PD, you know, a fillable PDF. Just with that capability, you can basically take all of the existing forms that you use and import into your app. Don't have to print forms, don't have to carry them around anymore. All your forms are on your mobile device. That takes about five minutes. Boom, just import, start using. Print, share, etc. right? Uh, Daily log, huge, very popular app for us. I mean, just you know, really enables construction people to finally get field level information quickly and easily and get it to the right people at the right time. Um, you know, inspection, inspect equipments and assets, right? That's another really big area. Isn't, people are just taking, you know, have an app, photo, audio, video, boom, boom, boom. Collecting information really becomes preventive maintenance, right? A lot of expect, inspe you know, expensive equipment out there, no need for it to be break, broken down. If you are 
collecting and proactively inspecting things, uh, you, can get an, you, know, you can get ahead of the, the maintenance cycle. All right, not a very popular use case. Uh, data accuracy, right? Who wants to read this? Right? Signature, paper, no need. I think we're finally going to have my prediction. My personal prediction is in the next two, three years, we're really going to put a dent into paper forms and documents. I mean, they're, they're mobile devices. I mean, you can buy tablets, Android tablets, pretty decent tablets for less than 100 bucks. Why do you want to print forms? It's expensive, right? Expense. And then, you know, reading somebody's handwriting, <laughs> you collect information, you get the information to the right people at the right time, make, the, make decisions, that's what it's all about. Okay, uh, a lot of our customers use our apps because they're avoiding penalties. <laughs> it's very simple. They're creating really good documentation, very easily. And they can get construction guys to use an app, right? <laughs> simple. Try to get your construction guys to use apps, right? I mean, you, you know, those of you out there in the field with field experience, you know how difficult that is. Team communication, right? We're finally getting to the point where we're truly going to have near real-time information. What's going on in the field? What's going on in back office? Who's doing what? Assigning tasks, managing, right? It, people can act on information quickly. That saves time. That saves a lot of money. Improves quality, improves safety. Collecting data just became basically a no-brainer, right? Like I said, audio, video app, capability, note-taking, barcodes, you know, automatically timestamp, automatically uh, attach a map of where you are, all these things. So the apps that I'm describing, right, you can go on the Snappy platform, you know, and build these, these apps in, in, you know, minutes. You don't have to wait for a mobile app developer. You don't have to wait for IT, right? We have customers that build apps and go to IT and show them, yeah, here, look. And they go, whoa, you know, you told me it was going to take two years. You know, I just did it in a week, <laughs> OK? Um, paper forms, talked about it, clipboards. Project estimation, real-time data flows, right? It's not, you don't have to do things with the old assumptions. If you're collecting the data and you know what's going on, you can recompute very quickly and very easily, right? And really stay on top of your costs and projections and, and avoid customer surprises. Monitor equipment and assets, right? One of the first apps that people build on Snappy is, I have multi-million dollar cranes. I want to know exactly where they are at any point in time. <laughs> yeah, you know, obvious question and not a difficult solution, right? Just look at a map and see all your cranes, click, See what the status is. I want to see which ones are active, which ones are broken, which, you know, which ones need maintenance, right? Pretty quickly and easily done. Workforce management. You know, again, it's just about, and it's not just in construction. I'm seeing this uh, across multiple, multiple industries. It's people working at the speed of, you know, at the speed of information travel together in a coordinated manner, right? And knowing who's doing what, what the right hand, what the left hand is doing. Now it's easy. It's really, really easy. Right? I already talked about the costs. Apps don't have to cost $100,000, right? Um, we have um, just open air you know, device, type in Snappy, S-N-A-P-P-I, and you will, you'll see how many apps we have in the app stores. Download, use them. You know, everything from fire inspection to construction to invoicing to, you know, travel and expense management, all built on this ultra-fast platform with no coding. Okay. Um, and when you have that kind of capability, you can build custom apps for customers on average at about 5K, and many are much less, right? So very disruptive. <laughs> We're kind of like the renegades that are really stirring up things in the uh, construction industry. Okay, customer quotes, some history, Yale, you'll recognize some big companies to, you know, two guys and a dog that you never heard of. If you want to get in contact with us, here's some information, snappy.com. I hope I can answer some questions for you today. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, it's full. Um, so, I'm sorry, do we have anyone here from Game Plan? No. No, okay. Um, I didn't meet them. So, uh, next up we have Andy. Andy Jansen. Um, Andy is a delightful neighbor. Uh, <laughs> Built Worlds here, just right around the corner. You can go see their offices. Um, Andy has 13 years industry experience in engineering construction and information technology, leading human resources and building staffing organizations with Patrick Engineering. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Nice to meet everybody and spend some time with you earlier. And uh, thanks everybody for being here today. Go ahead. No, it's okay, Josh. No problem. Yeah, we don't really have much of an excuse for uh, not being at as many Built Worlds events as possible. Uh, we have the, the least distance to travel after all these guys that came in from across the country. So thanks for, uh, for having us. Um, for those of you uh, who I haven't met yet, hope to, to meet you through other networking events and, and at other Built Worlds events and to see you out on Hard Hat Hub. Uh, we're building a marketplace for the construction industry. And um, as uh, was mentioned, I previously ran human resources for an engineering consultant and a general contracting company here locally. Um, has anybody ever, any, any HR people in the house tonight? Anybody, anybody who's hired anybody in the house? I mean, have you ever hired people? Okay, okay, good. So that's the, uh, the, the problem that, that we are trying to solve and trying to solve it in this uh, construction industry. These are a couple of you know, really interesting statistics to us, um, some from the AGC and some from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. You know, we're talking about an absolutely gigantic industry, over 6.3 million people working in the industry today. That's just people that say that they work for construction companies. Um, couple that with about 6 million annual hires, and you're talking about 100% turnover nearly, right? And that's because many of the professionals and skilled tradespeople that work in our industry have several jobs per year, and they're going from job site to job site. So large, fragmented, you know, huge industry that equals the number of teachers, doctors, and lawyers in this country. So imagine hiring all of those people every single year, year over year. So just framing the problem, um, you know, that's kind of what we're dealing with. Um, this is a, a, a quote from the uh, AGC from earlier this month about the number of craft labor hours and the shortage of people. It's a, you know, a, a not so well kept secret that the industry is challenged with finding skilled professionals. And so that's what, um, you know, with Hard Hat Hub, what we're trying to, uh, to solve. Um, there's there's a, a way that we do that is, you know, really by thinking mobile first. And when we developed our, our first app for job seekers, we affectionately call our job seeker wizard, it's a really easy way for individuals that work out in the field or are at their desks to create a profile, much like you might see a traditional LinkedIn profile or, or some other uh, uh, profile that you would, would have on a, a job site. But the, the, the terminology and the data map and the, um, the types of skills and certifications and project experiences that people have had in this industry are really important to us as they're putting together those profiles. So we've got about 80% mobile traffic to our site currently. We know that these people are out in the field. They're working 12 hour days inside of a refinery or out on the railroad or wherever it may be. And you know, the last thing they're doing is coming home and sitting in front of the computer, but they are out on the job site and they are looking at their mobile device and they are finding out about us and you know, ultimately might be interested in, in determining an easy way to uh, advance their career or to pick up a certification or skill that they don't have. So um, I was intending to do a demo, but I was told to keep it short. So I think this animated GIF sort of does justice. This is somebody going through the very easy wizard process of saying, I'm a construction manager. I'm in the construction management industry. I'm a superintendent. I've worked on hospital projects. I have my OSHA 30 certification. Um, this is how much money I need to make. This is you know, how, I'm, how much I'm willing to travel. And as a superintendent, you know, obviously those things are pretty important uh, for, for companies to know. On the other side of this, like any marketplace, we've got our, our hub community and then we have the employers. And this is uh, just a screenshot of the employer web app. And so 
employers, when they're interested in making uh, a hire, uh, whether it be a skilled, trade, skilled trades professional or, or a project manager or, or uh, anybody in between, they go through a similar uh, really easy wizard that they can complete in about two minutes. The Job Seeker web app, or the Job Seeker um, wizard, and the employer wizard is a couple minute process. So very quick, very easy. Um, they're able to then uh, filter and search you know, by industry specific terms. And our process really works like, more like a dating site to be honest. You know, people laugh when we say that, but we're trying to figure out how to find the highest quality people that have the skills and certifications for our employers in the shortest amount of time. So I asked if anybody had hired people previously. It's because I sort of got sick of using career builder and getting hundreds of resumes when I would post a job only to find that there were like two engineers or, you know, or two project managers that had you know, built data centers. And so you know, this is a much more high quality way to connect people with, um, with uh, employ potential employees. Really simple process for them to be able to unlock their profiles and contact candidates. And kind of the other thing that's really exciting about what we're doing is you know, the traditional methods, as I mentioned, the job boards, the career builders, the construction jobs of the world on one end of the spectrum, very cheap, but, you know, but not high quality. The third party recruiters on the other side of the spectrum today is, you know, how, how many companies go out and, and find people to fill their positions. But it's tough for companies in this industry to write $25,000 checks and, you know, margins are tight. And, so um, you know, our, our platform it has the relevance of, of a, a third party recruiter at the cost of a, a career builder or a constructionjobs.com. Um, some interesting things, and you know, I, I want to you know, wrap up, but wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're thinking about doing with this marketplace as we grow it and as time goes on. Um, Providing insights and, and helping people really understand how they can build better careers is, is ultimately what our goal is. You know, we want to work really closely with companies. We want to understand our users that are out in the field and, and, and really validating you know, by doing research and figuring out how to, to build an app that really speaks to you know, what they do and, and the things that are important to them. And so, you know, we have the ability also to capture a lot of data and tell them, is my profile being viewed? If not, why? Do I, might I want to go out and, you know, uh, obtain a different skill or certification that's in demand? We can tell you based on the employers that are working with us, what skills are in demand, what area of the countries are hot, which area of the areas of the country are hot. You know, you may be working in Georgia, but if you only, you know, were able to be a little bit more mobile and, and move down to the Gulf Coast, or you know, over into Louisiana, you might be able to find you know, a job paying you five or 10 bucks more an hour, which is a, a substantial number when, you know, when you're making 25 or $30 an hour. So um, a lot of the, you know, the insights and things that, um, that we'll capture as we're working with employers and, and employees um, are important. And, and then you know, on the employer side, um, we always talked about it because I did some business development for, uh, in my former life also. Do we go out and get the, the work first and then go find the people? Or, or do you find the people first and then go get the work, right? So it's always this chicken and egg scenario. And with Hard Hat Hub, employers have a really easy way because they don't pay for profiles until they actually go out and decide to you know, meet somebody. They can go out and take a look at, well, all right, we can find people that have this skill set you know, if we were to bid on this project or if we were to win this project. So, you, have to turn, you, you can turn down less work, you can pursue more work, you can find more people that are qualified to do the work if you do win it. So thanks so much for uh, hearing me out and I'll look forward to questions later. Okay, up next we have Dan. Dan Connery, uh, he's the Vice President of Construction and Owner Solutions at New Forma. And as I heard from earlier, he's been there for quite a bit, 11 years, you said? 11 years. 11 years, which is actually uh, kind of the seedlings of the company. So he'll have a lot to say. So welcome, Dan. Thank you. So uh, what I want to start with is a little bit about New Forma. How many people here have heard of New Forma, maybe using New Forma? So quite a few, good. So uh, we currently, or I should say you all, have managed 1.8 million products, uh, projects through but what really geeks us out, and I will admit to being a, a huge number nerd, is three billion files have been managed using our system. So that's not a typo, that's three billion. Uh, 
3.5 petabytes of data, and we analyze all that data so we can get a lot of information out of that. And that's what I really want to talk about today because what we're seeing is in 2004, we looked at a project of some moderate complexity, and its data co combined was about 100 gigabytes. We redid this in 2015. And anybody want to guess how much data? Similar size project just 11 years later had? Two terabytes? Six terabytes. Six terabytes? <laughs> so 6.5 terabytes of, of data on a similar size. This is one project. And again, what I want to make sure you understand is the complexity of that project was no different. So it's not like this was a $2 million project, this was a $100 million project. They were both the same size. So in just 11 years, there's been a 65 time increase in the amount of information that people are dealing with. And why is that? I'll tell you, one of the biggest reasons is because of mobile. The second biggest reason is because of BIM. I have never seen more PDFs of drawings in my entire life than when I go into a BIM project. <laughs> why? Because BIM has the easy button. Gee, let's produce 1,000 sheets. Let's post another 1,000 sheets. At least before, it used to cost you money. So it, you didn't have such bad behavior. And yet, one of the things that we hear consistently, and I'll be curious to see if anybody disagrees with this, is that schedules are being compressed. So you have less time to do projects in. And the complexity of those projects has just gone through the roof. Things that are being built today were unimaginable 10 years ago. So you're being asked to do more, less uh, time to do it in. You can't decrease your quality. And as we already heard, the labor market is incredibly tight. So we believe the only way that you can solve that problem is through efficiency. So we talk about this. Lean is how many people here are doing anything with lean, either last planner methodology, lean design, lean construction, so a handful of people. How many people have at least heard of that term, lean? So three years ago, four years ago, I never heard anybody talking about lean. Five years ago, I talked about lean and I was laughed at. And seven years ago, they talked about it and I was scolded. People <laughs> said, you, you, you don't talk about that stuff. You don't know anything about our industry. Uh, so you got lean. You have uh, BIM, building information management or building information modeling. I talked about that. Press a button, thousands of sheets and thousands of sheets. How many people here have worked on an IPD project? How about an IPD-ish product, meaning the principles of IPD but not the contract? So you get IPD. Who's heard of Internet of Things? So now everything's connected to everything else. Just information is just spewing out left and right. And the poor person sitting here trying to hold that dam back, and yet there's a tsunami coming that's about to overwhelm them. So from a company perspective, what do we think about all day long? And, and what, why I'm mentioning this is because this is what I think you all need to be thinking about, or you need to be talking with your leadership and make sure they're thinking about is individual productivity. We saw an excellent presentation on how to build these apps. And that's about making the individual as productive as possible. And then you want the team to be able to collaborate because as individuals, we're working together. And what's unique about our industry, it's all about projects. We're here working together to do a project. But what's very unique about our industry is most of us don't work for the same company. In software, at least we have designers, we have programmers, which are our equivalent of contractors. Uh, subcontractors, but at least we all work for the same company, and you don't. There could be 50, 60, I've seen projects with 100 different companies on board. How do you get them to collaborate? How do you get trust built up? And then as each individual company, how do you get enterprise data back? All this information is being generated. How do you turn it into useful information? We talk about it data to information, and then information into intelligence. So. Phone, tablet, and now laptop. How many people here have either seen or ha have a Surface tablet or a Dell equivalent of a Surface tablet? So that's marrying the tablet and the laptop. How many people here have heard of Fablet? So what's a Fablet? So first we had phones, tablets, and laptops. Now we got laptops that are tablets and tablets and phones that are each other. So it's, it's crazy. And you have to. You have to keep on top of all this stuff. Now I got watches. So my watch tells me to stand every hour on the hour. I get a beep, I stand up. So, <laughs> which I was going to do in the middle of the presentation, but I thought it was rude. So <laughs> anyways, the, uh, s similarly, what we want to do is empower the individual to capture information. And one of the things that we hope is here's an example of a daily report app that we have. So similar to what you saw earlier, the ability to track who's on site, equipment, et cetera. But this is really what we're trying to eliminate. Talk with people about how long it took 
takes to put a daily report together, a contractor. So they collect this, all this information on a piece of paper, and they go back to the hotel or back home. And what most people are doing at home, sadly enough, is they're putting the reports together. So it takes me a long time to collect this just so I can produce this. But now what we see in 2015 is this is an artifact of doing that. This just happens. And that's what excites the people in the field. So I don't have to produce the report. I mean, I click the button and this thing just comes out. I'll use that. And then it's about uh, plans, getting plans. So one of the questions we were asked earlier is about, uh, is when are we going to see paperless projects? And I often talked about less paper rather than paperless. But I'd been to a job trailer, admittedly it was in Canada, uh, that had no paper when it came to plans. Everything was digital. And that's a huge step forward. So we have technologies around floor, uh, taking plans and creating links and doing comparison. When you get multiple versions of a document, how do you know what's changed? How many contractors do we have in the room? And how many designers? So a couple designers. So when I work with designers, it's, it's making sure how can we convey to the contractor what's changed between version one, version two, and version three of our documentation. The contractors complain that I think unjustifiably, the architects never tell us what's changed between versions of drawings. And now you have tools that will tell you what's changed between versions of documents. Because what a waste of time to sit around and try to figure out what's changed between documents. I talked about collecting this and connecting this all into the cloud. So it's about mobile first, cloud from a collaboration perspective when multiple companies need to work together, getting each to use the other system. Good luck. Let me know when that ever works for you. But if you can have one system that's uh, ubiquitous to everybody, that's going to work. And then, of course, connecting the enterprise. And then all this data is being collected from 100 gigabytes to 6,500 gigabytes. You can't, a human being can't consume that much information. It's not possible in its raw form. So it's all about uh, dashboarding. So what our goal is simplification. It's turning what is simply overwhelming to overwhelmingly simple. So we agree with the points that were made by some of the other panelists. So with that, I thank you, and I look forward to the rest of the presentation. All right, up next, uh, we have Charles, um, who's the Chief Technology Officer for in in Infotech. And there's okay. a lot of things in my hand. Thank you. <laughs> You probably haven't heard of Infotech because we generally build systems that are enterprise systems for state DOTs. Uh, we're branching out, getting into more private industry, but our focus has been on large systems to manage the entire construction process from conception through final construction. Mobile Inspector is our first mobile app, and when we decided to build it, we had to decide just what we were going to use as our guiding principles. And the number one thing that we had was that usability comes first. We're used to people who work in a DOT's main office or a district office. They've got a lot of support. They've got IT there. They've got training. None of that exists for the inspector out in the field doing daily progress reporting. So we have to have no user training needed, zero configuration needed, um, and in-app help instead of the user manual. Our mantra really was to never forget the intended user. So instead of producing a general purpose app that did a little bit of everything, we said, what does that user do every day? What app is going to solve his problem? And that is what we built out for Mobile Inspector. It doesn't manage the contracts itself. It works with a central system that manages the entire process. And this is really focused on just the inspector daily reporting, going out on site and figuring out what you need to record that in the past was done on paper and then later transcribed into systems and used to gather payment and monitor progress. Uh, right now, we work with four different back-end systems. So it's a fairly general purpose system that can be made to work with any kind of larger management system. So our goal was the best possible user experience for these people. Our focus was on daily reporting. So it's site conditions, it's item progress, it's materials that are delivered to the site and consumed, uh, personnel and equipment on site, weather conditions, we do geologging, uh, geotagging of where you are, all of that, we also let you take photos to document what's going on at the site. Security is built in. That's another thing that we had an issue for. Because we're working with state DOTs, they're always very concerned about what happens if these devices are lost or stolen. Um, and really what it should be is what happens when these devices are lost or stolen. Because they will be. One thing you can do is you can say, well, there are employees 
we'll tell them the right kind of practices they should have. They should encrypt their laptops. They should have big uh, pin codes on them before they can unlock them and use them. They should leave them locked when they're not uh, uh, actively working on it. You can set all those rules. You can't make them happen. So we wanted to be as secure as possible without having the user have to follow all necessarily good practice. So we have no user information, no user accounts in the device. We don't need a VPN, so this device can't be used as a gateway into the back office systems. All it does is work on this thing and communicate with a cloud backend. That's sort of essential for this to really work. Uh, there's no configuration because every one of these devices, when you first install it, automatically goes to the cloud at a known address and it configures itself. And the device is given a unique identifier. And then the user just tells the central office person, I have device ABCD. Um, the device doesn't know that that's John Smith. It doesn't know John Smith's password or anything. All that happens is the user knows he's ABCDE. The device sends information to the cloud. The central office system picks it up, sends information back. All that happens automatically. That's been a big success with our users who are used to having to enter uh, website addresses, port numbers, passwords, all that stuff as they go. Now they don't have to worry about any of it. Well, we've launched this just one year ago. As I said, this was our first mobile app. Um, we've worked with a variety of different technologies. Mobile is a little bit different because we're not looking to move our entire system to mobile. We're looking to take certain parts of it and move them to mobile. But it's available in the Android and iOS app stores. It's had very strong adoption for state governments. Nine DOTs have adopted it. Seven construction management consultants that work with mostly smaller localities, counties, and cities. The responses have been very enthusiastic. It's probably been the most enthusiastic early response we've had for any app. It's very clear that the users in this industry are ready for simple mobile apps that solve their problem and get out of their way. Uh, we're working on more apps to do this, to extend it, and our goal is to not say, oh, we need to do 10 things in the field. We'll create an app that does all 10 things. We're going to say, who's doing them? And let's create an app for each of those users instead of a universal app that they can all share. And that's it. Thank you. Awesome. Next up, we have Mark McKinsey, the executive VP of Penta Technologies, um, who self-described has tremendous passion for efficiency and overall effectiveness. I'm excited about this. Well, thank you. Well, good evening. <laughs> you know, I want to start with, um, on behalf of Pinta, thanking, got a wow. smart aleck up there. <laughs> <laughs> thanking uh, Builtworks for facilitating this great learning experience, so I think it's great. So um, maybe just to begin with, um, Unlike some of the other panelists, I really don't have a technical background. Um, I came out of operations. I was with TIC, the industrial company, and the Kiwit Corporation. Uh, started off as a labor in general labor in 1975. And I know I don't look that old, so. Um, um, so it's, you know, why is somebody in the, uh, coming out of the operations in the technology business? But, um, back in 2012, I, uh, I decided to take a shot at early retirement, and, you know, I was so excited. It was like, you know, now I can play golf every day. I mean, this is just going to be great, right? <clears throat> but, you know, what I discovered is pa playing really, really bad golf every day is just not that great, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyway, um, we had... Uh, with TIC, we had gone through an SAP conversion back in 2003, and the company that I work for now, Pinta Technologies, was shortlisted. And uh, during those SAPs, I uh, got the short straw and had a leadership position, which I wouldn't wish on anybody. But anyway, um, I made it, I reconnected with Pinta and ultimately ended up going to work for them. What did I do? It's not my fault. <laughs> We're good. Left, left, left. Go. Oh, sorry. It's a so it's that side. Oh, okay. Yeah. To go forward. I think 
turned off the projector. Uh, <laughs> 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 Oops. It, oh, there we go. Okay. There. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, Pentec Technology, we provide construction enterprise software services, and we've been doing that for over the last 35 years. And this is a display of a few of our uh, valued customers. So what I do with Pinta, I mean, real simply, I've, I'm really tasked with uh, enhancing and building new software that aligns with industry best practices and uh, also uh, with a great, exceptional user experience. Uh, and to, that, to that end, what I want to talk about is a software application that's currently in development as we speak, which we're calling Pinta Work Package Manager. Uh, it's a web-based um, uh, mobile application that is fully integrated with Pinta Back Office. And the targeted end user group is really the foreman and the foreman's crew, or we could substitute the frontline supervisor. So the idea is that the frontline supervisor is going to be able to uh, record time, equipment utilization, uh, installed quantities, um, or percent complete. But in addition to that, um, in the context of the entire work package, they're going to be able to access information that was discussed earlier, whether that be drawings or specifications, uh, bill of material. Um, also, the ability to access uh, forms or reports that are required. That could be electronic JSAs, uh, safety meeting reports, uh, incident reporting associated with safety, uh, equipment failure, um, pre-shift in inspection of construction equipment. Um, there's the ability to, what we believe will be more accurate, timely capturing of extra work situations. And when that time and cost is collected, it can be shot right into uh, Pinta change management system. Uh, in addition, it would be environmental reporting that may be required or QAQC, uh, checklists, and so on. So what we see as a value added is, um, you know, probably most importantly is improving. And what this concept really is, we mentioned, talked about lean earlier, it was brought up, but it's sort of the merging of, of the concept of work package managing and the last planner system. So what we're really shooting for is improve schedule reliability and predictability, um, obviously reducing the paperwork for the frontline supervisors are having more time to spend with the crews to focus on safety, quality, and productivity, uh, seamless reporting and document control where, you know, the problem with our frontline foremans or the challenges that they have as time has gone on this, you know, back in my day, you know, you filled out timesheet for your crew and that was it. And, as time has gone on, it's timesheets and JSAs and QAQC reporting, environmental compliance. And so this clipboard has just grown to this enormous amount of documentation. And it's not like at the end of the day, the foreman just takes all this and hands it to one person. I mean, the, the safety stuff has to go to the safety guy. The QAQC stuff has to go to the QAQC guy. So, so what we're envisioning is a seamless distribution of those uh, of that documentation uh, to the appropriate person. So the obvious uh, decreased response time associated with safety incidents, impacts, equipment failures. Uh, like I said earlier, the um, uh, improvement in accuracy and timeliness of capturing extra work, which uh, we believe will help avoid disputes, and in general just uh, re reduction of costs through waste elimination. So we've got, uh, it's broken out into three releases. We've got uh, two of those, they're going to be the fourth quarter, and the last release is sometime second quarter of 2016. So in general, and for those uh, uh, last planner folks, I stole this uh, line from them, but in general what we're trying to do is help solve the age-old problem of workers without work or work without workers. Mm -hmm. So, thank you.
Do we? <laughs> last but Do not us least. the honors. All right, I'll bring you in. Well, first of all, I'm the last one, so thanks for not <laughs> bailing out on the end. I thought being the last presenter, I'd be having these two guys in front. Uh, my name is Tui Quarterman. I'm the founder and the CEO of Procore Technologies. Um, wow, well, we started on the last slide. I guess that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. Let's go backwards. Um, so, uh, in, how many people here have heard of Procore before? Well, that makes me feel good. <laughs> Thank you. So, for those of you who haven't, I just this is kind of our um, our data sheet, much like uh, Penta. Dan did at Penta. Um, just so you know, what we do, we're 100 percent cloud-based construction project management. So when you look at what we do, we do everything but ERP uh, job costing. Um, we are everything that is related to bringing jobs in uh, and for field personnel to use our products to uh, uh, deliver projects. Um, 1,200 customers, we have 275 employees uh, running 120,000 projects at any given time um, and we invest heavily in R&D. So, um, I, as a CEO, am a product guy. There's some CEOs who are sales and marketing guys. I invest tons of money in product because I love what we do. Um, so 13 years ago, when I started this company, I had this idea. I wanted to figure out a way how to modernize construction. And if you go back to 2002, it's weird looking around the room, like half you people were like in elementary school. but. 2002 when I started this company, if you think way back and, and hard about what the state of construction technology was, it was these gray screens on these computer monitors that sat inside of a job site trailer, which were primarily there to capture data. That was their primary purpose, and really it was for risk avoidance, but that was it. Um, there was no consideration for collaboration, there was no consideration for workflow, and, and um, kind of the worst offense was there was no consideration for you. How do you use products to do your job? It was really clunky software. So when I set, off, set out on this mission, I defined three principles that I thought would change the way construction software was delivered to the marketplace. And first, it always has to start with the user. Procore is 100% focused on starting all of our problems by getting our users to interact with the company and talk about what the problems are and help us deliver the solutions. It's amazing how much construction technology gets in the way. And if you really think about what on the construction side your job is, a lot of it is working around software that was written by propel propeller headed engineers that had no idea how you were performing your job. So you do all of this stuff that is complicated and that you, now you've just gotten numb to because nobody took into consideration your needs first. Secondly, we focus on simplicity, because you can be user-centric all day long, but if you don't deliver simple, intuitive apps that people are going to use, you might as well not be delivering software, right? So we focus on simplicity, but that doesn't mean that we focus on simplicity at the cost of lack of power. Procore, in our 13-year history, we have built an amazingly strong enterprise application engine on the back end. We obscure the complexity, so the end user gets tools that makes them much more productive. And finally, we focus a lot on time to value. I cannot tell you the number of massive implementation of construction software applications out there that take a year or, or more. It's crazy. Um, we focus on time to value. We want the end user to pick up our uh, mobile device or log in on the web or whatever device they're on and be up and running in hours and days, not months and years in some cases. So these are kind of how we um, set about um, creating software. So what do we mean by 100% user centric? So a lot of companies out there say, we value what our customers say, and you, you know, they'll all tell you that. But we, we really take this to a, a kind of an absurd extreme. This year we've had 300 of our customers fly out to Santa Barbara, spend two days in what we call our innovation labs, where they sit with an engineering team, product, UX, and QA, and they build with our engineers the solutions that they need to solve the problems that they have. So hugely impactful. We don't dream up the solution. You guys bring it. Every innovation lab will have between five and ten different customers represented there and we do them all the time. And It's not hard to convince people to get on a plane and leave Milwaukee in the winter time to come <laughs> to Santa Barbara, but we uh, do it pretty well. And once we design that software and build the software in the lab, um, our product team has um, done over 350 um, uh, meetings this year alone to validate that the products that we're building are usable. So trying to tell you this is more about the company and less about the product, but this is the way we do things. We just do things differently. 
So I love these kind of screens because the older folks in the room know what I'm showing you here. Um, but this isn't simple. Construction project management is not simple. The job that construction project managers do on a day-to-day -day basis is hard. Building 10-story buildings, very, very difficult. And our friends in the enterprise software world thought they might as well give you, for a complex job, a very complex piece of software to make your job even harder, right? So Procore has it takes a different tack. Customers came to us recently in the last year or so and said, why don't we go ahead and get um, all of this complexity that's creating job logs and creating your RFI logs and your submittal logs, and let's make it drawing centric. Let's pivot the entire process. So we went and we looked at how our customers were using our competitive products, um, where RFI creation and distribution could take 17 to 24 clicks, right? With Procore, you draw your, your uh, cloud on the um, desk on your, on your drawing, because it's drawing centric, you assign it, give it a due date, the back end system, our enterprise application takes care of the complexity of distributing the information, tracking the response date, making sure you're getting the answers back in a timely manner, and that's it, it's done, right? So it's, it's super simple. RFIs, punch lists, drop a change order on here, uh, meeting minute items, photos, all of the document controls that you do on a day-to-day -day basis, you do now from a drawing-centric perspective. And a huge value add is at the end of the job, you end up with your as-builds. No one's going back and slip sheeting and doing all this other crazy baloney. No one's stapling RFIs to drawings that are way out of date. On top of that, everybody gets to use the same set of plans and everyone's building off the current set of drawings. Huge benefit, all customer-driven, simplicity matters. And then finally, time to value. So um, just building simple things doesn't really, really matter. Like I mentioned before, we need to get products in the hands of the end user, and the end user needs to get value very, very quickly. So with Procore, we don't limit the amount of enterprise training and support that you get by if you're a paying customer or you're one of the team members. All project members get access to the same training, education, certification, and support as our paying customers. Um, that gets everybody up to speed very, very quickly and realizing the value of Procore. The other aspect of time to value is, like I mentioned before, with like RFI turnaround time. A, a very large um, metropolitan transit authority just did a, a case study before they used Procore and then afterwards. Average RFI turnaround time pre-Procore pre was 21 days. Average turnaround time afterwards was 20 minutes. That time to value it has a huge impact and it makes your guys' job a lot easier. And by the way, everybody in this room, it doesn't matter if you're an architect, an owner, contractor, everybody is in alignment with getting these, the information flow to happen as fast as possible. So everybody wins. So anyhow, did we you know, uh, attain the goal of making construction, um, you know, um, bringing it up to, to date? We've done a lot of work. I think we got a lot more work to do. But the fact is that Procore is the most used construction project management application on the planet. So I think we're doing something right. So thank you guys very much. And if you guys have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. There you are. Thank you.